Today, the committee is considering three important public health measures reported last week by the Subcommittee on Environment and Climate Change. By acting today, we will deliver crucial drinking water improvements that communities desperately need. We will also meet the promise of President Biden's American Jobs Plan by improving the safety and affordability of drinking water for all Americans. And finally, we'll tackle PFAS contamination in our air, land, and water. And we'll begin by considering the Aqua Act of 2021, authored by Chairman Tonko. This legislation provides significant federal funding to revitalize our nation's drinking water infrastructure and replace lead service lines nationwide. It provides funding for water resiliency programs, school drinking water uh, safety programs, and tribal water programs. And it provides funding to pay off water customer debt, helping families and water utilities navigate a debt crisis that puts both at risk. Most importantly, the Aqua Act would strengthen our drinking water standards and improve the EPA's ability to set those standards when needed. The Environment and Climate Change Subcommittee has held several hearings on standard setting challenges under the Safe Drinking Water Act, uh, and the Aqua Act is now a full rewrite of the Safe Drinking Water Act process, but it would make targeted changes that could empower the EPA, and it would set deadlines for several long overdue standards. Drinking water infrastructure has long been an area of strong bipartisan agreement in this committee, and I hope that drinking water safety can be as well. The second bill is the Low Income Water Customer Assistance Program is a bipartisan bill led by Representatives Blunt Rochester and CATCO. It would create permanent assistance programs to help low-income customers pay their drinking water and wastewater bills, just as the LIHEAP program helps low-income customers pay their energy bills. These permanent programs will be a safety net for low-income customers and the water systems that serve them. The bill enjoys widespread stakeholder support, and I expect it will have broad support today. And the last bill is the PFAS Action Act, and that was the product of robust work in this committee last Congress. It passed the House last year on a strong bipartisan basis, and I'm pleased that this Congress that is being led by Representatives Dingell and Upton, uh, the two Michiganers. We heard at last, well, not the only Michiganers, but two of them. We heard at last week's subcommittee markup that some of my Republican colleagues want to delay this bill uh, because they want to hold new hearings. But I just believe we have to act now. PFAS contamination is a pressing issue for countless communities. And while the EPA under President Biden is working hard to address the issue, it's still paying, playing catch up after four years of inaction. One year, after, one year after the House passed this bill, we still don't have a drinking water standard, a test rule, or a hazardous substance designation for even a single PFAS chemical. So I think the bill is urgently needed and look forward to advancing it today. And that I will yield back, and I will recognize uh, Mrs. Rogers. But let me do, let me just say, from a process point, because I didn't thank you, um, that um, you know, uh, in the last uh, week or so, the ranking member and I have been working hard to try to have this process where we can be in person and still have those who want to participate virtually. Uh, her and her staff have uh, been working with us on a regular basis, and so I, I do want to thank you, uh, Kathy, for all your help with that. And I yield now to the ranking member.